All right, everybody. Uh, it's the let's see, what do we call it? The Super Syntax After Dark podcast. And uh, so this will precede the Ryder Cup broadcast, broad, uh, podcast that comes on right after this, right? Because the Ryder Cup will, will fire up in Italy just in, in, in a few minutes. I'm the only one that cares about that, aren't I? Okay. Uh, I about it while it's happening and then I quickly forget about it. <laughs> Especially if it goes like it did today. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I'm all I'm Team Europe. So anyway, uh, or since you chimed in right away, um, let's talk about high school football. And dang it, uh, Waco High was so close tonight, but they got they got edged by a point by Colleen Ellison, which is we used to cover the Colleen schools uh, around here. So I don't want to show favoritism necessarily to one over the other, but. Um, Waco High is more of our area school, and, and and they couldn't quite get it done. What happened tonight? Yeah, it was actually a walk-off touchdown. Um, oh, my gosh. Ellison got the ball with about a minute 25 left, went down the field, helped by a huge unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Um, they had a 20-yard run. It was fourth and three, actually, and they ran it, ran it straight up the middle for about 22 yards, I think it was, or 20 yards, and then Waco High got hit with a penalty. Um one of those situations where it looks like, you know, a kid was trying to um, stay on top of an Ellison player for a little bit too long, got hit with a penalty. and um, Ellison, you know, scores a touchdown on the last play, makes the extra point for a 21 to 20 win. You know, Waco High had just gone down the field um, and scored a touchdown of its own to make it a 20 to 14 game, missed the extra point. They tried to go for two on it. Um, they had missed an extra point earlier and they, uh, and, and I think they just didn't really feel confident with their kicking game because they had also missed a field goal and, you know, missed that two-point conversion and it ended up costing them in the end. But just a uh, really a sloppy game throughout for both teams. I think I counted up 31 penalties. Uh, that yeah. was 16 for Waco High, 15 for Ellison. So, you know, just kind of a sloppy game. And it's, it's crazy that it ended the way it did because it was seven to six. Both teams traded touchdowns on their opening drives. And then nobody scored again until six minutes were left in the fourth quarter. So now, uh, it was a crazy night, really, when, when it came down to it. Do I, do I have, have it right? You said it was like a penalty, like there was a kind of a pile up, and they just threw a flag based on something that happened at the bottom of the pile. Yeah, I, I think it was actually one of those deals where you know Waco High is trying to get up slow at the end of the game, so you know guys just playing on top of another guy, you know, trying to trying to just milk the clock and not let the guy get back to the line of scrimmage. And, you know, Man, that's, that's a tough that penalty. Happens, but, yeah, it's that's unfortunate that it penalty. happens. But, I mean, that's, you know, that's part of it. You know, the guys have to understand exactly how long they can do those kinds of things. And, um, you well, know, uh, on the subject – oh, sorry, didn't, didn't mean to interrupt, there. Didn't interrupt you there, Jason. No, you're good. It, it's tough. Okay. And Chad, you'll you'll appreciate this reference that I'm about to make. but um, Okay. Talking about the penalties, um, it, it, I wouldn't say it was the epitome of hyperbole. <laughs> there was a penalty on every play. That's kind of an inside joke between me and Chad. But, Brian uh, Regan. The yeah. greatest of Brian Regan. Okay, well, so let's stay on the subject of big local schools that didn't quite get it done tonight. DJ, uh, Midway, close in the second half, but not quite there. Uh, close at the beginning of the third quarter. And then they kind of just like beat themselves up a little bit. It's really, I feel like the entire game, Heights was just carving up the trenches. Like it, 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 they would go on these really long runs. They would find open space. They would just find gaps in in the in the D line and the O line. It, um, and then later in the game, it was like. I wasn't paying attention to the officiating until the end of the third quarter because um, Harker Heights had a, the, the quarterback looked like he'd been sort of sacked and fumbled or something like that. And um, they ruled the throw that he was trying to make, right? Like he bobbled the ball, but they, they said mm -hmm. it was incomplete. And then he got tackled after he lost the ball or whatever. And they said it was an incomplete. And then, uh, one of the midway defenders got in unsportsmanlike conduct. So that mm -hmm. put, yeah, that put Heights at the 15 and they ended up scoring 
um, going on. And those types of uh, emotional turnarounds are hard to bounce back from, right? You think you got a turnover, but really what you got is a penalty mm -hmm. and they've got a first down. Yeah, I know. And then earlier in that quarter, Midway had gotten a stop at the one yard line because Heights fumbled. And mm -hmm. so they started mm -hmm. the drive at the one yard line and 12 yards later, Ty Brown also fumbles the ball and gives it back mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. uh, Heights. So it's just like, yeah, I saw that interchange on your Twitter and your tweets. Back and forth. So, yeah, you I know. was having some technical difficulties. I forgot to bring a backup hotspot and the one I, the one I was using my phone and I, I ran out of data. And then I just didn't have signal, so I couldn't tweet from my phone. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was, I don't know, it was a long game of just, like, uneventful football. Well, you had the technical difficulties to keep, thing in, keep, keep things interesting, right? I mean, that's part of covering high school football is, like, how many problems are you going to have? Right? <laughs> yeah. Like, I got stuck behind a train on the way to my game tonight, you know, and it's just like, okay, this is this is what's happening, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, anyway. Like, I got stuck behind a train for 45 minutes, you know? Oh, that's tough. Yeah, yeah. Morning. I couldn't back out of my parking spot because of the line that was leaving. But, that's why yeah. you got to ride in your car. See, that that's part of that. That's part of that philosophy. You ride mm -hmm. in your car while you wait for everybody to leave, you know? That's 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 a life hack. It's a veteran life hack. Okay, uh, we're gonna change directions because I'm getting depressed about teams losing. <laughs> and we're gonna go to Levi, who saw a team win uh, against, against a rank Yoakum squad. Uh, big win for the Pirates tonight. Yeah, it was a really big win. They were they were trailing fourteen to thirteen at the half. Um, La Vega, like, it was weird because in that first half they played better, but there were just so many penalties, like, just stupid penalties that they had. And they would it would be, like, third and 15, and they would just – they just kept giving up third and long just over and over and over and over again. Um, in the second half, though, their defense really kind of buckled down, and they, they played really well. It was – so, Yoakum scored on their first drive of the second half. It was 21 to 13. <clears throat> and then Junior just took over. Um, he had a great possession. He he found his brother for a 34-yard touchdown um, to tie. And then he got the two-point. He tied the game. On that drive, he also, like, hurdled somebody, like, mid-stride. Oh, wow. Like, mid yeah. stride. like I hope there's a replay somewhere. It was crazy. Um, mm -hmm. And then the fourth quarter, Yoakum was kind of wearing down the La Vega defense, and I thought they were going to win. It was, it was second and 18 around, like, the La Vega 45 or something. And there was an offsides penalty. Um, and so Yoakum just threw the ball up. And there was a P.I. And so originally, like, the 15-yard the penalty was going to be automatic first down. And it was going to be, like, Yoakum's mm -hmm. ball, like, the 30. And, like, I just kind of assumed, like, oh, they're going to go score and win the game. But then the refs, the official – I should have timed it. It was at least 15 minutes. They were just talking and just running back and forth to each sideline with the coaches. Just, like, like I had no idea what oh, was going man. on. And I've after seen that like, happened before, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I was messing with Michael before the game because I was like, my game's at seven. I'm so excited, like I'm gonna get home early. And we were making great time, and then this just like ruined everything. And like that was like, yeah, that was like 20 minutes. And then so anyway, they they didn't end up calling the PI. I was kind of confused, but anyway, they called the offside. So then it was like second and 13. La Vega got a stop, and then they got a sack on third down, forced a punt, and then the punt went to the four yard line. And then La Vega had, like, three minutes to go, 96 yards. Junior got them to, like, the 50 with five seconds up. Um, threw a Hail Mary, didn't work. Game went to overtime. And La Vega got the momentum back. And then Roland, Roland played great tonight. He's he's really he's a really good running back. I didn't um, realize it was an overtime game. Yeah. And, and oh, then now it's Roland. Now, dude. Yeah. Yeah, Roland, Roland scored in, like, the second or third play of overtime. Just right up the gut, 20-yard touchdown. Um, and then – the young, I know the La Vega has a lot of younger guys on that defense, and man, they stepped mm -hmm. up in the second half, and they just played tough, and they got a, they got a big stop, forced an incompletion on fourth down, and uh, it was a, it was a really good game, it was a really good win for La Vega as they go into district play, so it was exciting. So the long session of meeting ball when they sorted out that penalty that ended up going La Vega's way. Yeah, because it's, I don't like I'm not a, I'm not an expert, but I was assuming. That because it was PI, it would have like 
overruled the offside. So what it should have been an automatic it must first have been a down. procedure penalty that they, they preempted or that they preceded that it should have been blown dead instead of the play. Going may, in. May, yeah. Maybe, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see any contact. That's what was kind of confusing to me. So it should have been first. And like I said, it should have been first and 10 at like the La Vega 35, but instead it was Ooh. second and 13 at the 45 mm-hmm. or something. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, good for the Pirates. That's a good win for them. Um, I think they've won three in a row now after you – know, Yeah, they've won three in a row. Yeah. Yeah, starting district play next weekend. And, again, they don't really have that tough of a district besides China Spring, I don't think. Um, Stephenville's so. pretty good. Stephenville's pretty Stephenville. good. Stephenville. And Stephenville, yeah. Yeah. And there, there's only five teams in the district. So anyway, uh, uh, Michael, you saw Connolly, Sam's uh, Kobe Black, get beat by Springtown, and, I, and I'm sure that's uh, – I mean, it's non-district, so that's one saving grace for them. But what happened tonight with the cadets? Yeah, and, and actually Kobe Black did play in the second half. Oh, um, okay. He, he okay. did end up getting out there. But, yeah, he, he didn't play in the first half, and it's funny because they, they actually jumped out to a, a 19-7 to first half lead, actually jumped out 12 nothing um, early. I guess that was – Actually, they made it 12 nothing late in the second quarter, missed a couple uh, two-point conversion attempts. But, uh, yeah, the, the issue with Connolly was also penalties. Um, you know, and, it, and it's funny because uh, Connolly actually led the game for, you know, I think it was 42 minutes, 42, I think almost 43 minutes of the game. They actually led uh, until Springtown went down there at the end and uh, scored with just a little bit over – I think two minutes left and um, it's a tough way to go out if you're Connolly, especially when you led for so long, but Mm -hmm. uh, coach Terry Garrick was, you know, he, even though they led for so long in that game, he felt like they were just constantly fighting against themselves uh, with those penalties. And and he was just disgusted with it. Honestly, he said, it's got to get fixed. Um, He said it will get fixed. Um, And and, Mm -hmm. and to your point, there is one saving grace that it's not district play. So kind of can work out those kinks now. But uh, that's one that Connolly definitely felt like it should have won. There was not a moment in that game where I thought Springtown was the better team. I mean, no no disrespect, that's a good ball club over there. But Connolly had had the better stuff. It's just, uh, just a really disappointing way to go out. Uh, Jamari and Vincent went down with a sprained ankle. I don't know if that maybe played a factor. He was playing real well in the first half at quarterback. Did they have to replace quarterback? Yeah, so he he didn't play in the really he he even left before the end of the first half. Uh, they brought in the what's his name Shepherd, uh, the okay. backup, and and he actually he didn't play too bad. He threw like a a pretty nasty thirty nine yard bomb toward the end of the second quarter to to give them that nineteen to seven halftime lead. But I mean he he threw a pick late in the game after after uh, Springtown took the lead. You know they got the ball back looking to they needed three to tie it obviously mm-hmm. and and just couldn't get a yard and it was third and 10 in, in their own territory and he just lofted it up and it was picked off so uh like I said Kobe Black did go back in that game and he made some plays but it just like I said f- felt like they were uh kind of playing against themselves and just couldn't really uh couldn't really muster muster one and, and shout out to Springville they definitely deserved to win that one um there toward the end yeah well if you're missing Kobe for the first half and Jamari and Vince for the second half it- and then you got penalties and stuff like that thrown in. I mean, football is such a weird game, and you need some continuity and some, some cohesiveness, you know, to, to beat anybody. Uh, and, and speaking of, I mean, I'll get to my game in a second, but anybody noticed the uh, – I thought Robinson was going to have no problem with Waxahachie Lab. I yeah, me that. too. What was that? Yeah. yeah. And they got I got, they got it handed to them up there in Waxahachie. So, I don't know. I guess we'll have to figure that one out. Um, I am in Dublin, Texas. Uh, on my way to Lubbock tomorrow to catch a 2.30 game at Jones Stadium between the Red Raiders and the Houston Cougars. So I came to Dublin today, checked into the Relax Inn in Dublin, Texas. It's fancy. And then I drove over to Heiko for the Mart at Heiko game, right? Well, I started to drive over there, and, like, there was the train tracks. The gates came down, but the train didn't come through. The train just sat there, like, 100 yards down, for ages and ages and ages, and the cars just backed up in Dublin, Texas, you know. Finally, everybody started going through the gates and the train track. That's what I did and ended up in Heiko. And then there was a wreck outside Heiko. 
So it took me an hour and 15 minutes to go 20 miles from to Dublin to Heiko. And that was unfortunately more exciting than the football game, which Mart <laughs> won 23 to zero. And, and 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 the most interesting thing about the football game, I mean, Mart did did what it does what it does. They they made a few big plays and put it away and didn't. I don't think they let Heiko cross like the forty five yard line all night. Um, but here's the thing, Heiko from the very beginning. In fact, I was taking photos and so I was on the Heiko sideline. They call in a play. And there's like twenty five seconds on the play clock, and they call in a play, and then the offense just stands there. And the coach is to my left. I guess it was the OC for Heiko. And he's like looking around and he's going, what are we doing? Because the players were just standing there in the huddle for like eight to 10 seconds as it got down to like 15 seconds on the play clock. Then they ran up and and I heard the coach say, oh, yeah, I forgot. Never mind. OK, OK. So their game plan was to wait until like it was a certain time on the on the play clock every play. And then go to the line, you know, go to the line, and they're they're running clock that way. Okay, so fair enough, they're running clock by using the play clock. But also, and uh, Kevin Hoffman pointed out in the second half, he like was talking to people on the sidelines, some of the you know, kind of assistant coach personnel type of people. He was like, the play clock guy in the press box isn't starting the play clock until the referee signals it in. So it's forty second play clock, right? So usually. Once the whistle blows, that 40 seconds starts, right? Like once the once the previous play ends, the 40 seconds start. But that's not what the guy in the high Hill press box was doing. He was giving them eight to 10 more seconds while the game clock was running. And then he would start the 40 second clock. So they sit back there in the huddle for 30 seconds on every play, you know, so you get a first down or two and all of a sudden you run off four five minutes, you know, of the game clock and you've gotten like one first down and it was driving Mark the, crazy. Run the four They're quarters like, on a football field. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, so, you know, I, in fact, Hoffman said at one point, it's like, we're playing three and a half quarters or something, you know, we're not even playing a full game here, but it didn't matter. I mean, Mart was up 13-0 at halftime, and Heiko wasn't going to score, especially they weren't trying to score. They were down 16-0 late in the third, early in the fourth quarter, and they were just letting the play clock – I mean, they are letting the clock run. They are like, we're just going to try to not get beat really bad by Mart. Chad, what was so, the spread on that game? There might be something we need to investigate there. Yeah, yeah. They, they, somebody was on FanDuel or something trying to make sure they didn't <laughs> – they they bet their team on FanDuel, you know, Heiko plus twenty seven, so they stayed under that or whatever, right? Well, it sounds like uh, at least your game didn't have a ton of penalties. That that seems to be the theme for the rest of us. Yeah, well, it it did. I mean, there were Mart would have scored forty points if they hadn't, you know, if they hadn't stopped themselves a few times with penalties. Uh, and it's kind of weird, I you know. Last week with the university game, two weeks ago with the March Centerville game, there was a ton of penalties. And I don't know, you're seeing that later, later into the year. Uh, I, I blame Gen Z, you know, these kids just can't focus. No, we can't, Chad. No, we can't. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that was, that was just a zinger. Just kidding. Just kidding. Um, well, guys, uh, anybody else see anything out there that, that caught them, caught them by surprise tonight with the best game of the night that the trip covered that, that everybody can see at wakeftrip.com was Lorena Academy, which Academy. Brian Coates, our intrepid freelancer Brian Coates, described that as an instant classic. So I wish he was on here to tell us about it, but the, the Leopards got them a win. Uh, what was the final on that one? Anybody see it right offhand? Uh, oh, there it is, 56-38. That does sound like a barn burner. Um, anyway, well, it's past midnight. Unless anybody has another story to tell, I guess we'll sign off. Well, I mean... I was supposed to look into Riesel Rosebud lot. Riesel oh, you were you that. tracking that one? Yeah, Riesel took care of that. I mean, they did let uh, Rosebud lot score once. So that the first points that Riesel has allowed since the first game. Oh, um, really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then Mejia got its first win of the season uh, in a shutout over Kemp. So, right. Um, Right, really right. Good, good for Black Cats. They they really needed a win. Well, um, the uh, the Mejia Black Cats and the Bosqueville Bulldogs. And the yeah, Bosque I was just going to bring up Bosqueville. Bosqueville yeah. scored like like more than double the points it scored all year. 
Right, right. Which was, which was back really... night for the Bulldogs. No kidding. Bounce yeah. back night for the Crawford Pirates. Got a win over their rival Valley Mills. And uh, the, my Itasca Wampus cast didn't play tonight, I don't think. So. <laughs> Axel's uh, like 6-0. and oh. Yeah, Axel, yeah, Axel, Axel did well. And they beat Kearns. That's a pretty lopsided win over what might be the second best team in that district. So. Hey man, or, Axel's really good. Yeah, yep. big trust. We're gonna see. We're gonna see a few new faces going deep into the playoffs this year, I think. And, and Axel went two rounds last year. Let's say double that this year, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Jason, you're wearing your Rangers hat. It's not gonna happen tonight. Oh, it's definitely not gonna happen tonight. I got. I had a feeling all week they were gonna push this all the way to Sunday and just, you know, make make everybody as nervous as possible. It's I not mean, my Astros jersey, but it's my space cowboy. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, tomorrow tomorrow will be the telltale day. You know, if the if the if the Astros are still alive in the division going to Sunday, I think it's a problem for the Rangers. So. I'm not going to lie, I'm a little scared. We haven't but been great at execution at, lately. At this point, I'm not scoreboard watching as an Astros fan. I'm just like, let's get that one win over the Mariners and, and, and stamp a playoff spot. And, and then we'll worry about what, what are, whatever else after that. So, okay. So we've talked about high school football now in the Ryder Cup where Team Europe has a six and a half to one and a half lead. Hmm. I'm just kidding. Guys, hey, thanks Big for joining Big 12 has huh? the Big 12 has the most uh, uh, golfers in the Ryder Cup right now. Yeah. Uh, 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 Victor Hovland and Ludwig Aberg had um, a big win. Uh, they, four and three, they dominated their. Uh, morning match and I actually I was joking about it being a Ryder Cup preview but I have to say this uh, my mom and dad my dad played golf at Texas Tech and we went and watched Texas Tech's golf team uh, in Arizona in in April and got to visit with Ludwig Aber and uh, just such a cool cool kid and um, uh, so to see him out there you know before he's ever even played in a major uh Winning a point in the Ryder Cup is awesome. So, of course, he was from Texas Tech and Victor Hoffman from Oklahoma State. And then on the other side, you have Scotty Scheffler from UT. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's uh, Super Syntex After Dark for week six. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Anybody with any parting shots? No, I'm I have a parting shot for after we stop recording. <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you all this story, like, in person. All right. Cool. Well, we'll cut it there, and Levi can tell us his story.